Boys and girls, today I want to take a deep dive into the production, the mix and the tones of a great sounding power metal hymn. This one comes from the band Firewind, Gus G's Firewind. It's called Ode to Leonidas and it sounds like this. No! We have teamed up with no other than producer and mixer Dennis Ward, who has worked with bands like Halloween, Angra, and who recorded and mixed this Firewind album. We did this because we filmed an entire course about mixing this song, where Dennis shows you every detail about the mix. It also includes the multi-track, so you can mix it yourself. There's a link below. But in this video, I want to focus on the bass tone of that record, because this is a really interesting story. Dennis, he had to recreate the original bass tone for this course, because it got lost. He only had the DI left. And he did this by using IK Multimedia's Tonex. I haven't used Tonex so far, but this sounded quite impressive. If you don't know what Tonex is, it's finally something like a software version of a Kemper profiling amp or a Neural DSP Quad Cortex. But you know what? I think I'll just pass it over to him so he can show you what he did exactly. I will be back later in this video to talk a little more about the course because you really want to mix that song, believe me. It's a great song and it's a lot of fun, but also because you can win a lot of cool IK Multimedia Tonex stuff. Hardware, software, pedals, and whatever. So stay tuned, I'll tell you more in a minute. Let's pass it over to my dear friend and colleague, Dennis Ward, and let's talk about power metal bass tones. Next up is bass guitar. Now, the original bass mix that I had here got lost completely. First of all, I used a lot of outboard gear, but the biggest problem is even as I tried to import the individual tracks, it just crashed. I don't know what was in there, but it just, I couldn't recover it. No way, no how, so I have no idea what really happened. So I took the DI track, thank God I still had that. I remember there was a phase when I was a big fan of having a normal bass sound combined with a Marshall Plexi for the drive. I was just into it and I did this for a long time and I'm kind of sure that's sort of what I did. So I've got my DI track here. These two tracks are summed into my bass bus, mono. One of the first things that I noticed here on my DI track is that sometimes the dynamics are pretty outrageous. I'm a fan of using a good preamp for bass, something that clips a little bit, something that's a bit um, saturated, something that holds it all together. I love Neve preamps for bass, and as a matter of fact, my BA1073 DMP is my go-to preamp for recording bass DI. So, all right, you can see here on this bass DI track, I've got this plug-in on it. And I'm gonna bypass it first so you can hear how it was. Nice, clean and pretty and very dynamic. Now I've got this set up so that it's relatively loud. As you can see, I've turned it down a lot in the output, but it's quite loud in the input. I've got it in line, not mic. And here's the difference. This gives it a tiny bit of grit and stops those peaks similar as it would in the real world when you're using a real preamp. It's just a bit, but you know, details are important. Next up, I have my Tonex plugin, which is an amp simulation, or rather better said, it's an amp capturing plugin. And like the Kemper, you can model, capture your amplifiers, speakers, pedals, whatever you want. And I use this in my live setup. I have this pedal as well. And because I have made so many captures, including my Ampeg that's downstairs in the large recording room, I've made tons of captures. I've made this one specifically uh, a month ago, and I really like the way it sounds. I can let you hear it. It's warm, it's pretty, it does the job. And that, that is an Ampeg SVT? Classic. SVT 4x10, yeah, classic. And 
Oddly enough, I captured it as a pedal and not as an amp rig. I find this thing captures better when I capture as a pedal, as opposed to capturing as a rig where you can separate the amp and the speaker. I don't know why. Maybe one day I'll check that, but that's just the way I found this sound to be better. It is like a Ampeg tube head going through a four by 10 Ampeg cab. Eight by 10 cab. Eight by 10 cab. mic with? Telefunken microphone, uh, 251. 251. And what's neat about this is because I, I recorded it with a, a mic relatively far away, let's say one and a half meters, you know, quite quite a distance from the amp because I find the slow fre low frequencies are slower and they just get captured better when you move it back. However, you have this problem of distance and phase correlation. When this thing captures, you can have 100 milliseconds of, of latency in between and somehow it brings it back together. Wow. I don't know how it does it, but it does. I've tried capturing plugins with tons of latency and when it captures, it puts it back on the spot. I guess it's part of it somehow, but it does that really, really well, which brings me to another point that I'll show here as well. But first, um, next up after this, I've had a uh, EQ edition. And all I did was, I think dynamically, yeah, I'm taking down around 120 hertz. I've taken down a couple of dB and it's reducing a bit more in some spots. And I made a small boost, you know, 3.6, 3.7, just to give a little bit more pick. It's very soft. The sound is very, very warm. Almost too warm for a DI, but, but I had to do something. So it sounds like this. But enough is never enough. So we have this next track, which is quite similar as far as the chain goes, because we have, again, the exact same... No, we don't have the exact same set. Here, yes, that's interesting. Here, I've actually distorted it more. I've distorted this one more because this is a distorted channel anyway, and I wanted to have more control of the gain being driven. Is that the Marshall channel, right? This is the Marshall. And now we're listening to it with just the... The Neve preamp, and you hear it's distorting a little bit more there. Here's the difference. I'm trying to get it aggressive before I go into the amp simulator. And this is like the default amp. It's called Black Angus. It's not even a Plexi. I think it's a JCM 800. As you can hear, it's pretty dirty. And it has a lot of resonances though, which is kind of normal in the low frequencies. Now, because I just want to get the attack and I want to get a bit of the clang and the meat and potatoes of the, the grind, and that's it. I've done some radical EQ and I've cut on a very steep shelf, 18 dB octave at 250 Hertz around. And then I've cut again here at 5K, another 18 dB octave. There's a resonance here that I'll show and I've boosted the mids like nuts just to get it to sound honky and and uh, very specifically mid-rangey. That's what it sounds like with it. Bypass. And here you can hear around 666 hertz. Of course. Obviously. There is a very strange resonance. It sounds like this. Right there. The devil's frequency. There it is. You found it. I found the devil's frequency. <laughs> 666 hertz. Well, here it says 665.15, but you know, what the hell? It's a neighbor of the, <laughs> of the devil, of the beast. <laughs> and now we put it together. We have this sound. I'll turn the Plexi on and off to hear the difference. Okay, and that just makes it a little bit grittier, right? And But it's in phase. That's interesting. So that's the Now here's the really interesting thing. I check this with the um, the Align 2 plugin, mm -hmm. right? And I checked it over and over again. And in Cubase, you know, you can use it in the Aura mode or you can use it as a plugin um, just in real time. And no matter how I controlled it, it was only five 
samples of a difference. Wow. And five samples is nothing. And if I turned it on and off, I heard no difference. So I just didn't use it because why, you know, why use it when it's really no hearable difference? Well, that speaks for the Tonex thing, like correcting whatever, whatever latency there is or just cutting off any any initial delay or pre-delay? I pre -delay. think so. Uh. I think so. I can't figure it out. Like I said, I've done some, tried to capture some of my setups where I'm using plugins and to keep it easy, I'm using a laptop to capture, using my other computer as the amp where I've got like plugins and whatever. And then because of latency alone, because of, of phase correlation, there can be up to half a second latency. You're trying to play. And I'm thinking, oh, is this going to work? And the first time I did a capture, I was blown away that it was completely accurate. It totally ignored all the delay that was before the signal. Awesome. Neat. And then, like I said, with this bass amp, the mic, I mean, one and a half meter, probably a little bit farther. That's, that's a... a good 15 milliseconds of latency and that's something you do like all the time like having the mic that far away from from yes. the cab or yes i do that a lot i do that a lot and i phase correlate later i found this to be a lot of work but it's totally worth it usually you always mic bass caps from a distance but you need a big room i i used to do the classic thing with mic in front and i still do that every now and then putting a mic right on on the uh on the speaker but I always put one far away too. And I always find myself coming back to that mic far away because it sounds like the amp as I know it. It's similar to a guitar, but guitar is a little bit mm, unforgiving because a guitar in a room, especially when it's loud, will shake everything and it'll reflect everywhere and give you some nasty results if that's not what you want. However, I've also done things with guitar amps where I've actually tilted the amp toward the wall to make a certain kind of phase effect which can be quite neat, especially if you're doing organic rock and roll like ACDC, uh, and then putting a mic far away trying to capture it. But it's easier on bass when you have a good dry room for some reason. I don't know why. I see we got to do a few more courses. Okay, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Now, in our bus, I have a master EQ, and I don't think a lot's going on here. No, I've just dropped out a little over 230 hertz just because that's usually a... A messy area for bass guitar. And I've taken a little bit down here at 110, 111 hertz. Also dynamically. So let's see what that is doing, actually. Ah. Okay. Yes, right there. It was getting a little dangerous there. God, I love dynamic EQs. That's, they're just fantastic. Next up is a distressor. I actually had a distressor in the chain. That much I do remember, a real one. And uh, this is kind of the way I would use it, I guess. Um, when you use this much distortion in your bass sound, the compressors become less and less necessary. But I did use one here. Again, the detector set on high pass. I let the bottom frequencies just float through. Distortion 2. Seems to work well for me. Six to one ratio. Slow attack, fast release. Mix 100%. And lastly, I have the Little Labs subharmonic uh, analog resonance tool. That's uh, a cool tool. And first I wanna show what it sounds like with just this thing bypassed, because it's, it's special. I love it's on bass guitar. Admittedly, if you don't have a good speaker system, you're not going to hear a big difference there. <laughs> well, it sounds great, right? It boosts the lower bass and cuts the little the resonance. boomy region above that, right? Yes, and, and it makes a certain resonance that makes the bass sound in one area, one frequency is always a little bit forwards, which makes the bass sound not dominant, but very present. Mm. And that's something you can do a lot with compression too, but compression sort of makes everything sterile and it just makes it sit back and you lose attacks and this and that. And that's a neat little effect. But, you know, I also like doing this with the other plugins. Like there's a sub synth from Plugin Alliance, I think it is. Sub synth. And it does a pretty good job with this too. It has a similar feature. Uh, it's a little bit more sensitive, but it does it quite well. I 
specifically remember a few years ago using this plugin a whole lot for my bass guitar. So I kind of assumed I did it then, so I've just put it in again. <laughs> so let's hear this with all the stuff on and off. You gotta hear that in the mix to really hear the difference. But I can play the drums and bass together. See what this sounds like together. You can hear the 110 hertz. Now it's clean. Not much to show there, that's the bass. If you wanna see more from Mr. Dennis Ward, you can, because we filmed an entire course where he shows how he mixed that song. It shows every detail, every track, every plugin, all the automation, everything. It includes the multi-track, so you can mix the song yourself. And this time we've even included stems from Dennis' original mix, so you can check out what his drums, guitars, vocals sound like. Really, really interesting. There's a link below to the course. You better get it now. I'm pretty sure you will learn a lot. As usual, there are two ways how you can get a course. Either you just get the course, or you become a member of Cola Audio Cult, which is actually much smarter, because then, for a little more money, you will get all our courses, and uh, they just keep on piling up. You will also get free plugins right from the start, like Rotten Pool Verb and the La Boga Distortion. You will get free exclusive IRs, you will get drum samples, a lot of stuff, and you become a member of a great community. So you can either just get the course or become a member of the cult, which I guess is much smarter. <laughs> But there's even more good news. We've got something to give away. Among all the people who will buy the course or the membership within the next two weeks, two weeks after the release of this video, six people will win something from IK Multimedia. We've got one Tonex pedal to give away. Great for live use. You can load your you know, Tonex captures into that pedal, play them live. We also got a Tonex capture box, which basically is a DI box that will help you to capture your analog tones and get them into Tonex. And three people will get Tonex Max, which is the software version of Tonex. So if you buy the course or the membership within the next two weeks, here's your chance to win some cool shit. Isn't that amazing? It is. All right, that's all for today. I'll be back, I'm pretty sure, with more videos from that course because it was really, really entertaining and I actually learned a lot of stuff from Dennis and I like watching that guy, to be honest. Let me know how you like this video and Dennis's approach on getting great bass tones. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Uh, check out the links below to the IK Multimedia stuff and to the courses. Uh, good luck um, with, with winning the prizes. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hi, Dennis Ward here, and you are at my studio. Today we are going to mix a song from the band Firewind. This song is called Ode to Leonidas. Have fun listening, have fun going through the tracks with me, and let's rock this one. In this mixing course, we're gonna go through every track, every insert, every effect, every routing, and we're gonna see what I've done and analyze everything in total detail. To get your hands on this course and the multi-tracks, just click the link below and have fun mixing six minutes of epic power metal. Firewinds, Ode to Leonidas. <laughs>